In this video, I'll be featuring tutorials for five different prize winners from this year's Paper Airplane Designer Contest, and I will be announcing the three grand prize winners, which will each be featured in their own tutorials at a later date. Now, the designers of each of these five planes will be winning a free copy of Foldable Flight's Incredible Paper Airplanes, so if you are one of those designers, be sure to check your email to learn how to get your copy. Now, with that said, I'd like to actually begin by offering a few honorable mentions for paper airplanes that I loved but are not winners from this year's contest. So we have F802 Tiger designed by Shmuel Hayes, F24 Blackbird by Jason Liao, Valkyrie by All Around Origamist, Twin Turbine by Enrique Conde, and Turbulence by James Santarella. And with that, let's get on to the winners. Our first winner from the Foldable Flight Paper Airplane Designers Contest for 2022 is Ling Luo, designed by Zhang Renji. And this paper airplane is as good as it looks. It's an incredible performance design that locks together in its three-dimensional shape. It's just very, very elegant. I absolutely love it. And our next is a similar design. This is Shrike by Khan Y. You can see it locks in the nose and has a different shape, but kind of a similar shape to this. It is another excellent performance model that locks in its three dimension. It's, it's just a really, really good paper airplane. After that, we have an aesthetic paper airplane, Wolverine by Jude, which looks a little bit like Sentry or Spectre or some of these other two pronged designs, but has its own flair with these awesome fins and it performs really nicely as well. Next up, we have Night Swifter, designed by Jared Ong. You might be familiar with Swifter, which was one of the winners from last year. This is a really, really good boomerang, an improvement on his earlier version of this plane. And it locks together in its three-dimensional shape and just boomerang so reliably. I absolutely love this plane as well. Design. So congratulations to all of these winners. Let's learn how to fold their planes, and then I will be announcing the three grand prize winners from this year's contest at the end of the video. fold shrike is a sheet of eight and a half by 11 or a4 paper a ruler and a pen and with that we're going to begin by folding this right edge to the left edge now in the next step we'll open the paper up and we're going to measure from the top edge here and since I'm using eight and a half by 11, my measurement here is going to be three and a half inches. If you're using A4, you want to measure eight and a half centimeters from your top edge. Now you're going to also make a measurement, if it's eight and a half by 11, that you're using two and a half inches from the top edge. And if you're using A4, that will be six centimeters from your top edge. So you'll have different measurements than me, but we're doing the same thing with them. And using those measurements, now we're going to make two creases. So I'm going to flip the paper over and I'm going to fold down and I'm looking for that bottom measurement. And I'm just going to crease right across there. And so that measurement's the one that is three and a half inches from my top edge, or it would be eight and a half centimeters if you are using a four. And then I'll flip the paper over and use this measurement to make a crease on both of these layers here right like so, folding it just like that. Okay, and now I will flip the paper over to this side here and fold this edge into the center. And I'd like to leave just a little tiny gap here, just like so. And I'll do the same thing on this side. And now I'm going to unfold both of those. I actually open this up here. And you can see I kind of popped it into this position now. It was like that. I'm kind of pushing on that point so that I can kind of collapse it into this position here. And while we have the paper in this position, we're going to go ahead and fold our wings. And our wings go from this point here 
back to the back edge and you'll see exactly how I'm determining where to place that crease here. After I do it, I'll explain. So, as I said, the crease begins right at this point at the front. And basically you want this edge to just hide that back corner. And that's how you determine the slope of your crease. Once you do that on one side, of course, you just fold the other side to match. Just like so. And you can see that's going to be the general shape of our plane, but we need to make the locking mechanism and balance it and so on and so forth. So we're going to take the paper back into this position here and poke that so that that flips back to this side. And this is going to reform, or it's going to form, excuse me, our lock. And basically I'm taking this center crease and I'm kind of scooting it out of alignment to land it on this crease here. But I want to make sure that this point right here at the top doesn't get moved. Basically I'm swiveling it from that point right at the top. And when I have the paper in this position here where that crease is now landing on my wing crease, I'm going to hold it down and gently sweep out and actually make a crease starting from the center point out to the outer edge. Okay? And then I'm going to fold the paper in half but allow just this section here, this front section, to swivel on this instead of folding on that line. And you can kind of see what's happening here. And I'm going to flatten this side now to match the side behind it. Okay, and now I'm going to fold down on this crease I have here. Flip the paper over. Fold down on that same crease on this side. And now I'm going to fold this outer edge to this 45 degree angle crease here. I'll do the same thing on this side. And now you can see we're going to be able to swing these in, but we want to tuck these in behind the pocket that we have there. So basically just kind of curling this layer, tucking it in behind the pocket as I close everything up, trying to help it lie nice and flat. And I'll do the same exact thing on this side now. Just kind of curl that layer, tuck it in behind this pocket just like so. Gently massage it until it kind of adheres to the existing creases. You're not trying to make any new creases there. And now we are folding right along our wing crease. And you'll see when you do this that you have this lock at the front of the plane. You can sweep out these leading edges if you need to and you have a finished Shrike. Now, if you find that you need a little up elevator, you can of course bend the back edges of the wings up slightly, but I would encourage you to throw it before you add any because it might glide really nicely for you even without it. And with that, good luck flying your plane.
All you will need in order to fold Ling Luo is a sheet of 8.5 by 11 or A4 paper. 8.5 by 11 makes that really wide version and A4 makes that narrower version. This here is A4 and we're going to begin by folding the right edge to the left edge. Once we do that, we can go ahead and open our paper up and I'm going to fold this top edge down. Let me go ahead and make the crease and then I'll explain exactly how I determined where to place it. Okay, so basically, I want this section of the paper that doesn't have the layer on it to be exactly the same size as this section of the paper. So this edge here should be right in the middle of this point and this point, but that's an estimation. It doesn't have to be perfect. So if yours looks a little different than mine, no big deal. And now you're going to begin by folding this top edge here down just like a centimeter or half an inch. And again, this is an estimation. Yours does not have to be exactly the same as mine. It's just going to look something like this. Okay, now we're going to fold this edge here to the center crease, but leave just a little bit of a gap there, maybe two millimeters. You don't need to take your edge all the way to the center. And when you fold the other side, just try to match that gap, make it the same size. And your paper should look like that. Now we'll go ahead and open it up and fold this edge here into this crease. And you're going to leave just a tiny gap again. This one can be about a millimeter can be really small. You're just trying to bring that close to the edge or close to the crease without actually touching it. We'll do the same thing on this side. It should look like this. And then you'll fold in on your existing crease on either side to make it look like this. Rotate the paper and now just kind of pull this layer along this edge here. Increase it all the way to the middle and you could do the other side as well, but I would not worry about it I like to do one side at a time and now I'm going to go ahead and unfold all the way back out to this position here and Then I'll fold my paper in half and the thing you want to pay attention to is you want this crease to be a mountain fold when you have your paper in half Okay, and then I'm going to use that crease as a guide and fold right along it with both layers. And if you'd prefer, you can set your paper on the table and fold it down this way. Try to keep the layers adhered to each other so it's really nice and accurate. And once you do that, you can then stand that and squash fold, pushing down like that and land your crease right along that edge. Then flip your paper over and reverse this crease right here. And this is going to become the lock of the plane. That'll hold everything in its three dimensional shape later. But for now, we'll unfold that and we want to fold this all back in. So you're going to fold on the middle of those three creases, fold down like that, fold in and get all the way back to this position here. Now, what we want to do is kind of fold the plane in half and create our lock. And the way it's going to lock is we're going to actually fold this layer, this little section behind all the other layers. So as I fold that in half, let me make sure my center crease is in the right direction. As I fold this in half, I'm going to kind of reach behind this layer and tuck those behind, just like that. And I just want to do the same thing on the other side. So if you saw what just happened, you need to just do that on both sides. And so the first one's easy. You just reach behind. And as you're kind of folding in half, you just push it behind like that. The second one's a little harder because all the layers kind of have to be closed as you do it. But you just reach in there and fold it in the opposite direction just the same way you did the first, and you can kind of see now how mine is locked together. 
And now we are ready to fold the wings. And the wings are going to start right at the nose, go right through the top of the lock and all the way back. So let me go ahead and do one side. And you'll see the lock. You don't want to pull too hard, but that kind of sets your limit right there. The lock to the nose is how you start your crease. And then once you find that, you just set the rest of the crease at the same angle, right like so. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. I actually like to unfold the first wing as I do the second. Otherwise, you're very likely going to tear your lock. And then when I fold this side, I try to land the crease of my wing right along the crease of the other wing. Just like so. And then I kind of stand this keel of the plane vertically like this, and I sweep out on the wings to get rid of any slack. Okay, and there you have it. You have a finished plane, which you can see looks absolutely amazing. This is exceptionally aerodynamic, flies really well. You might find that it has a tendency to swoop up slightly. I've actually found that I really like how this plane flies in a straight line by tuning it down a little bit, just bending the back edges down ever so slightly. If you're flying this outside and you wanna see it just stay in the air a long time, not giving it any down elevator can work really, really well. But if you're just trying to get a nice, really straight line throw, I like bending those back edges down just a little bit. And with that, good luck flying your plane. All you'll need in order to fold Wolverine is a square sheet of paper, and we're going to begin by folding the right edge to the left edge. And once you do that, open it up and fold your top edge to the bottom. Open it back up, flip your paper over so that these are mountain creases, your point in the middle standing up. And we're going to fold this corner to this corner, making a crease that goes between the other corners. And we'll do the same thing in the opposite direction. Just like that. And now I'm going to flip the paper over. And I want to fold this top edge here to the center, but I'm only creasing part way, so watch what I do here. I'm only creasing between this crease here and this crease there. So your two diagonal creases create the limit. You can see the crease there. And I'll flip the paper back over now, kind of pop those back into that little orientation. And I'm going to collapse this in just like that to arrive at this shape. And now I'll kind of rotate the paper into this orientation and pull along that crease I've already made. And I want to flatten it so that it looks like this. The creases should go right to this point here. This edge here should land on the edge right behind it. And I'll do the same thing on this side as well. And your plane should now look like this. We'll go ahead and flip the paper over, rotate it into this orientation here and stand this flat vertically. And I'm going to squash fold it. And in order to make sure that this crease lands right where it needs to crease, I'm going to 
flip it over like this and line up the center point right between these two with that crease that's on this layer. When I do that, I can then kind of gently crease those and flip it over and actually really solidify my creases on this side. And I will take this flap, push it to the right, and do the same thing with this flap here. So I'm squash folding this, and this time I just land this point right on that point behind it. Okay, and then swing this flap to the left. Just like so. And now we're going to do a few more things here. We're gonna flip the paper over and fold this edge here into the center. And once I've done that, I'll open that up and I actually want to kind of reach into this pocket and pull this right over that edge that's there and kind of swing it in and allow it to kind of swivel open right like that and flatten it. Just flattening that bulge of paper. And I'll do all those steps on this side too. So I'm just folding this edge into the center. And now I'm going to open this pocket, making a crease right along that edge. And then as I push this down, you can see all that paper bulging and you just crease it right like so. Okay, and now I'm actually going to allow that layer to release and tuck it in behind this top layer. Do the same thing here. And now I'll open up this right side and go ahead and crease this right over the edge of the layer that's on top of it. Just creasing it into the center, folding it into the center rather. Same thing here. Okay, and now I'm going to open this flap here, going from this point right here to this point back here. This can be a little tricky. I try to locate this front point first and then swing this into alignment right back there, right at that corner point. Crease like so. Do the same thing on this side. and your plane should look like this. Now I'll go ahead and flip the paper over, and we want to fold this whole triangle here forward as far as it will go, which will create a crease going between these two points. Just kind of curl it and prepare it, and then gently fold it forward, just like that. Okay, and now I'm going to fold the plane in half, And I want to fold the wings by taking this edge right here to the bottom edge. So I'm really kind of being careful. I'm rolling the thickest layers and then I want to focus on the point and make sure that I get this to go right to a point because that's what makes the plane look so cool when you really get those sharp points at the front. So try to be as accurate as you can with that. And then you just follow that slope all the way back to the back edge of the plane. And once you do one side, you just fold the other side to match. Okay, so you can see what my plane looks like at the moment. And now I am ready to uh, narrow the wings a little bit. I'm going to fold this edge here right to the crease of the wing. So I'm really just landing the edge. You can see I'm not going all the way to that point up there. I'm landing the edge right along this wing crease. 
like so. And I'll do the same thing on this side, just landing this edge on the wing crease. And it'll look like this. And now you can see we've got a layer behind this. Basically, the portion of this layer that I just folded that goes past that, I want to just tuck right around that layer. So I'm just kind of wrapping it around and forcing everything all the way into the fin as much as I can and flattening it like that. I'll do the same on this side. And now you can see we are really close at this point. We are ready now to fold our fins. So I'm going to set the paper just open like this again. And I'm going to fold right from this point where this leading edge of the fin intersects this edge here to the point here where the fin is intersecting the back edge. So I'm just gonna gently kind of pull that up, make sure my crease is going all the way to this back corner there. just like that. And I'll do the same thing on this side. And there we go. So now all that's left to do, fold the wings back again and set your wing angles. Now, I would recommend that while you have it pinched in your hand, you make sure your wings angle up a little bit because as soon as you let go of this plane, you can see it opens up a little bit and you do not want the wings to sag a lot once they open. That'll create unstable flight. So make sure you've got a good dihedral angle while it's in your hand. The fins, you do want to be perpendicular to the wings, so they should stand directly up once you let go. And you might find that you need a little bit of up elevator. So if you're finding that this is diving or just not gliding quite as well as you want, you can just bend the back edges of the wings up just a little bit and address that problem. And that should make it fly really nice and level for you. With that, good luck flying your plane. All you will need in order to fold Night Swifter is a square sheet of paper, and we're going to begin by folding this right edge here to the left edge. Once you do that, you can go ahead and open your paper up, and you're going to fold the top edge to the bottom, but just make a pinch crease. Don't crease this all the way across. You're just making a little mark at the center, which will be your reference now. And you're going to take the top edge not all the way to that reference, leave just a little gap like this and crease all the way across. Okay, once you do that, flip the paper over, fold this top edge into the center, leaving just a little gap. This gap can be a millimeter or even less. And once you do that, do the same thing on the other side, matching the gap you made on the first. Just like that. And your paper should look like this. We'll flip it over and now fold this top section down right along that edge. And flip the paper back over. Okay, now we're going to kind of open this pocket up like that and squash it down. And basically you want to land this crease on this crease here, kind of meeting this junction of the two layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of approximate on this side and just crease very gently and then make sure I've got it in proper alignment. And while I have it here, I'll go ahead and crease that just like that, flip it back over and then holding everything down in alignment, I'll crease that edge there. Let's do all of that on the other side as well. So just kind of opening up this pocket, forcing that down and flipping it over, making sure I have it exactly where I want it. 
and then creasing this side right here holding that down holding this edge down I'm then going to sweep all the slack out right like that okay and now we can go ahead and just fold this down right here on that existing crease and do the same on this side and you can see we have this little section here I'm going to crease from this point right here to this point here and it's really narrow so it can be kind of hard to get a really straight crease between these two points try but honestly it's not crucial whether you do it'll look just like that and do the same thing on the other side Okay, and your paper should look like this. And now we're going to flip the paper over, unfold that. And we can kind of fold the plane in half, but let this open up as you do that. And you can see that's going to give us access now to these layers inside. Basically, we want to reverse this flap and just tuck it in behind everything else there. Okay, and once you do that on one side, just flip it over, do the same thing with this little tab. All right. And now we can open this up and just put that layer right back where it was. And view the plane again from this side. Now I'm going to open each side up and I just want to fold this edge here to that crease we have, leaving just a little gap. Okay, and we can swing those back in just like this. And now we're going to fold down on this existing crease here, bringing this triangle to this side of the paper. And you can see we've got a little pocket on the front. Basically, I want to take this edge here and fold it to that edge, and I'm only creasing to the center. You'll see what I do here. The crease might cross the center, but you don't need it to. So I'm really only trying to crease right to there, and you can see this crease I just made is halfway between this edge and that edge there. And I'm going to do the same exact thing on this side again, just creasing to the center. Okay, so I took that edge to that edge and it resulted in this little kind of elbow or joint that you can see as I open and close the paper, it wants to swing back. And that's perfect, that's exactly what we want it to do. We're going to fold our plane in half, allowing that to swing back and close up just like this. Okay, so now I'm going to fold my wing and the way I determine how to fold my wing is you can see we've got that little joint there. Basically that's determining the height of my wing and I want to fold my crease so that it is per or parallel to this bottom edge. So you'll see I'm going to pull it just till I'm a little bit tight right at that joint. And on the back edge, I want to make sure this edge here lands on the little short edge right behind it, making sure that it's perpendicular to the back edge. And there we go. And once you do one side, I actually unfold that wing and then fold the next wing because if you have both folded at the same time, you can sometimes tear this joint that's going to lock it in its three-dimensional shape. So as I fold this one, I just try to make sure that my crease here lands on the crease I have already made for the other wing. Okay, and you can see we now have the part of the plane that we're gonna hold. And all we have left to do now are fold the little winglets and fold a fin for the plane. So let's go ahead and with this wing down, just fold up like this. And this is going to be a little smaller than the keel of the plane. So you can see how tall that is. I just made this a little shorter. This can be an estimation. 
And once you do one, you can just kind of match up your wings. And I make just a little mark with my thumb there, which will serve now as my guide as I fold this one on this side. Okay, and we are so close at this point. I'm going to fold the plane in half. And you can feel right where these layers transition from being really thick to being thinner. There's a point there, that's going to be the front of our crease, and the back of our crease will be right where this crease intersects the back edge. I'm just going to pull this fin up. And I aim actually just a little below this point at the back. Crease them just like this. And now, I can kind of use those creases to pop this up inside the plane. I need to reverse this crease here in order to do that. And you can see what those look like. And when you close the plane up, now you have a fin that kind of sticks out the middle. Okay, and now we just set the wings like this. And when you throw this plane, you're not going to throw it like a normal plane, kind of overhand like this. You're actually going to tilt the plane 90 degrees and throw it like this, and it will fly in a circle back to you. Now, in order to get it to do that, you're very likely going to need to bend the back edges of the wings up just a little bit, give it just a little up elevator, but always test it without any up elevator before you bother to make that adjustment. And it can fly in a circle this way, or if you tilt it the other way and throw it that way, it can circle back to you that way as well. Good luck flying your plane. Now, if you just skipped ahead to the end of this video to see what the grand prize winners are, I don't blame you. I might've done the same thing myself, but do yourself a favor, head back when you're done watching this video and watch a few of the tutorials in here because the planes featured in this video are absolutely amazing. But I do share your enthusiasm for this year's winners. I'm really excited to reveal these planes. Each plane will be featured in its own tutorial with a customized template, and there will be a custom trophy going out to the grand prize winners. So with no further ado, the first grand prize winners of the Foldable Flight Paper Airplane Designers Contest for 2022 is Boss Clapper designed by Jeff Powells. This is an absolutely insane performance glider. It's really good at time aloft. It flies so elegantly. And it's actually an excellent boomerang plane as well. This was the standout performer, I think, of this year's contest. Now, the next plane is very different from that one. It's very impressive in its own right. And it is an incredible jet. It's Frostbite designed by Vanguard Studios and used Alex. This thing is just a monster. It has an air intake. It has two fins in the back. It has afterburners. It's just an origami masterpiece that blew my mind. I absolutely love this. So congratulations to you guys. And we have one final winner, a moment of silence and anticipation. The winner is Solar Flare by Aiden Dominguez. Congratulations for an exceptional design. This one reminds me a little bit of F-80 Centurion and some of my other planes. Solar Flare locks together in its three-dimensional shape, and I just absolutely love the overall shape and proportion of this plane. It is so elegant, so beautiful. Congratulations, Aiden, and all of the other winners, everyone featured. Thank you to everyone who submitted designs to this year's contest. I think it was the best one yet, and I'm excited for them to continue getting better. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who are supporting this channel and making these videos possible. You can become the pilot of your favorite foldable flight paper airplane and your name will appear next to the paper airplane you choose in each of my YouTube videos. So head over to patreon.com foldableflight and join the foldable fleet today.